John, if I could start with stop, stop and search, please. Um, maybe I'm missing the point. You are the chair of the Justice Select Committee. Is it not right and proper to say that to deal with an epidemic where it seems fine to run amok, as I said, on the streets of the United Kingdom, that stop and search should be intensified because amnesties are well and good, but they don't really, I don't think, essentially work. If you say to a criminal, if you're caught with a knife, you're going to be arrested and sent to prison. Is that not a message the Tory party should have been banging out for the past 14 years, Sir Bob? Stop and search, I've always said, is an important part of the tools in the box, yes. And I'm in favour of uh, a proper and sensible use of stop and search. I think police officers uh, do can do it properly. And especially now that we've got the body-worn cameras and so on, some of those previous examples of abuse and perhaps um, selective uh, stop and search of people because of their race and so on, that can be much more readily dealt with now. So I, I'm in favour uh, of making more use of stop and search on the right circumstances. We do have a problem. It's not purely, I'd say, a, par a problem for one party, because as you'll know, uh, there's still the issue in London, where we have really stupid knife crime. And of course, uh, the mayor of London is the person with the day-to-day -day responsibility uh, for uh, uh, policing. And I'm afraid uh, Sadiq Khan, the Labour mayor, has not been on the front foot in no. relation to this either. So we all need to learn about this and get behind the police and give them the backing when they use powers which are legitimate to keep everybody safe. I mean, I get your point, and we always have to look at both sides of an argument, Bob. I get the point that there are and have been examples where it's not carried yeah. out correctly, but you could say that about anything. What well, I indeed. find, yeah. uh, what I find, just unbelievable. I mean, you're a you're a long-standing Tory MP. Are you frustrated on the back benches that? I mean, to be honest true conservative values and policies like this, getting on the front foot, tackling crime, tackling immigration, all the things that the Tories are supposed to be known for. Are you frustrated, my friend, that either the messaging hasn't been great or that the electorate have just seen a party at each other's throats, they haven't been hearing enough of the sort of stuff that's coming out and they will cynically believe, Bob, it's because there's an election round the corner. I think the problem has been that my party's made it hard for itself with some of all the other issues, not to do what I think a lot of very good work that we are in fact doing. We have uh, toughened up the crime uh, laws uh, to deal with an awful lot of behaviour, including increasing sentencing. Sentencing has gone up uh, considerably uh, during the time of this government. More people are going inside and for longer and for violent offences. That's right. We've also uh, toughened up, as you know, uh, law elsewhere. I think we could still do more about around right, uh, knife crime. Uh, we have provided money for more policing. We've got more police on the streets. But it's a perfectly fair point uh, that because of some of the other uh, internal fighting that we've had as a party, a lot of that message gets drowned out, and that's frustrating. I completely agree. The other reason that it was great to have you on as the chair of the Justice Select Committee, ministers have uh, today triggered emergency measures to keep defendants in police custody because jails in England and Wales are, well, have run out of space. Um, Operation Early Dawn orders courts to keep defendants in police cells until prison beds become available. Um, I'd love your take on this. I mean, I know it's very simple to throw out platitudes, but I, I, it's like MPs who say, we need more housing, but they never want it in their own constituency. Yeah. Why the hell can we not, as a country, find places yeah. to build prisons, to put people who break the law, save giving out the message that, you know, there isn't space, certain crimes the police won't even turn up to? I, maybe I sound wrong here, Bob, but to me that's what's wrong. We should be building prisons and we should be saying to criminals, knife-carrying criminals is, is what we're talking about here as well, you're going to prison, you're going to serve your time. That's it. It's not a great look, is it? It's not. I think I, I've always argued that uh, we should treat building prisons as a bit like building what we call nationally significant infrastructure. Uh, things like important roads or power stations and so on, uh, where um, you have to speed up and streamline the planning process and, and accept that in certain circumstances, uh, in, a, in a particular locality, there may be a hit that the locals have to take for the greater national good, but you make that up to them by much more generous compensation. So that's what we do in relation to things like energy infrastructure. I think prisons, where we need them, will come into that category. But the there problem, is, is, the problem is as well, and you'll accept this because you've always been straight with me and vice versa. You've been in power for 14 years. We've been hearing increasing stories of uh, jails, ragbag jails with not enough space that are out of date. Yep. Surely the Tories, the party that they're supposed to be, should have been building more prisons 14 years ago, shouldn't they? 
I think there, there was a need for new build. Uh, and of course, Michael Goat back in 2015 announced a new build program. It stalled because the planning process was inefficient. Um, there's also a problem, I think, as well, to be fair, about making more efficient use of prisons. Because we do have an issue where the prison population has gone up massively. Uh, in a lot of cases, the conditions of the old prisons are really very bad. There are, as you rightly say, people who deserve to be in prison mm. and deserve to be in prison for a long time. Yeah. I just worry about the message that that sends. Um, I'd like your comment very quickly on the news the Slovakian yeah. Prime Minister uh, yeah. Robert Fico is receiving. We don't know whether it's life-saving treatment. There seem to be yeah. different different parts of this story. An assassination uh, uh, attempt. Yeah. The assailant's been detained. Apparently he was hitting the abdomen, the arm and the leg uh, in front of a lot of people, in front of a, a rather famous building. Your thoughts on that, Sir Bob? Well, any, any political violence is shocking, isn't it? I mean, we sadly had, I've had colleagues, a friend, my, my old friend, David, uh, David Amos, murdered uh, in his constituency uh, in front of people who I know well as it happens. Um, that's terrible. And so whatever anyone's politics, we've got to avoid violence. Uh, that, that, that's just alarming because it's an attack on democracy, isn't it? And it's an attack upon uh, society as a whole. Um, you could disagree with somebody's politics, but you have to recognise uh, that people who have the guts to stand up and run for public office are doing it to serve the communities, whether we agree how, with how they do it or not. And right, talking about running... Out of, out, out of the, uh, you know, unacceptable. Com completely and, and agree with you. Uh, talking about running for public office, um, this sort of hit us between the eyes today. Jacob Rees-Mogg, uh, today urging Rishi Sunak to seek... An election deal with reform. Rees Mogg, of course, a minister and a close ally of Boris Johnson. There is no doubt that the Tory party is on the ropes. Many people will say, oh, it'll be fine, it'll be OK. Every opinion poll says that your party is heading for a shredding, to be fair. Richard Tice has said that unequivocally we rule this out. Nothing from Farage yet. But I'd love to know from a backbench Tory MP's point of view, I don't know what the situation in your constituency is, but I've spoken to many who fear they'll lose their jobs. Might not a pact with reform be the answer? Because does not reform now represent a certain section of political ground that the Tories seem to have given up, Sir Bob Neill? Um, no, I don't favour a factor of reform, not least because reform are, are no friends of the Conservative Party. They made it very clear they actually want to destroy the Conservative Party. What I do think we need to do, though, is address the issues that cause people to vote for reform. So rather than doing a deal with the party, what I think we need to do is get back in touch with the voters who drifted away from us and address those issues that you've been talking about just now, actually, sort of topics. But uh, it's interesting, isn't concern. it? It's interesting. You talked, in all your experience, you talked about how people's perception of the Tory party is. It's been 14 or 15 years. The stuff they're throwing out now is electioneering. They've had a good look at it, which is, you know, I understand the British electorate, but what you get from reform, and I'm not giving in any way a view of what I think, whether reform becomes a big party or it doesn't, the fact is, to the right of your party... Reform is speaking to those electorate. Now, Rishi Sunak, one of my biggest criticisms was his, in his absolute desire to get the job, did a deal with Suella Bravman to unite the right, didn't like what she said and got rid of her. And he's now in charge of a party that seems to me to have so many different factions, Sir Bob Neil, that you wonder what sort of credible uh, offer you can make to the British people because I think they just see a shattered, split hull of a vessel, for want of a better phrase. Would you agree? You must, you must understand people's frustrations, what I'm saying. Look, I get, I get the frustrations totally. And I feel frustrated sometimes myself. But I generally don't think that backroom deals with uh, other parties is the answer. What we've got to do is get our messaging better. Yep. We've got to concentrate and rally together uh, and stop uh, pour, pulling each other apart. Uh, and in particular, I think what we've got to, uh, to be doing is saying to people, look, if you're not happy uh, with the government's policies, if you think that perhaps the government's not doing some things enough on the right, voting for reform under our electoral system, whether you like it or not, is going to split the vote, and you're going to get Keir Starmer, who you're going to like a lot less. We've got to give positive reasons for those voters to come to us and come back to us, but equally, we've got to say, warn them of the danger that, um, however frustrated, Splitting the vote is actually going to give you a left-wing government, uh, which is probably the last thing those people want. And that's the interesting thing, because, you know, I'm old enough to remember 1979, and I keep saying to people, you want to be careful what you wish for. However, yeah. what Starmer has done is he has radically changed a party from ha that had Corbyn in charge. And what I find really interesting is, there was a survey out the other day, 
that said there's not great love for Keir Starmer. There's yeah. great concern, uh, mm. anger, frustration with what the Tory government has not done, and that is carrying the day. My final question to you is, let's say there's an election in November, Sir Bob Neil. Is six months enough, enough time to get that messaging right? It is if we get our act together sharpish, that's what I'd say. Um, so we're, we're debating today, I've just popped out from the chamber, the Criminal Justice Bill, which does do an awful lot to tighten up the law in a number of those important areas. We need to get things like that on the statute book quickly. Uh, we need to start delivering and showing that things are working for our people. But we've got to get at it now. You know, literally, there isn't time to spare, is there? Really, really good to have you on. Thank you for coming out of the chamber. Always great to speak to you.